as we unpack more of what the crowd's reaction to John's message is, we see that the crowds are asking a great question. They're asking John, what do we need to do? They've heard this message, they've, they've been convicted, and when they, they hear John saying, you need to repent uh, and produce fruit in keeping with that, they have this great question. Well, what does that look like? What does that mean? What must we do? I love practical questions. Sometimes I think we can uh, think that by, by sort of teaching, we're helping people to understand, but the reality is, people need it uh, broken down. I need things broken down into practical steps. If you're asking me to do this, what does that really look like? If you're saying you mean this, actually give me some rubber on the road. What does it mean and what does it look like? And the crowds have this great practical question to John. What must we do? There's a, a, a something linked to our human nature where we're created with a purpose. We're created with that sense of there must be more uh, and, and a, a sense of um, wanting to um, do, wanting to do something, uh, a practical nature. You see it in the Garden of Eden when God puts us in the uh, put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He get put them in there with a purpose, and that purpose was to take care of creation. We're created as human beings with a need to purpose, and, and there is a requirement, I, I suppose, that. Uh, we need to make the response to the message tangible. We need to be able to make it something that people can connect with and understand what to do with. And, and there's a need for uh, that message and that response to, to work itself out. James, uh, who wrote one of the letters in the New Testament, he said that faith without works is dead. And he goes on to say, I will show you my faith by what I do. It's not enough to just talk about believing. It's not enough to just talk about faith. There should be a tangible reaction and a tangible evidence that if we've been born again, uh, we've actually been transformed. This is at the heart of John's message. You know, repent and bear fruit. That sense of uh, show that you've repented by what you do. There should be a transformed nature. And when Jesus met with Nicodemus and he talked about being born again, there's that whole element that being born again means we're transformed and we start again. Many years ago, I remember an acrostic being shared that if you want to know real joy, you need to put Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. And one of the characteristics of a transformed nature when we come into the faith and when we come to believe in Jesus is that we should have this genuine love for God and a genuine love for other people. And that should motivate us for compassion, it should be a compassion that flows out. And you know, at the heart of God is this sense that he wants none to perish and all, should, all to be saved. He wants people to be rescued from the gates of hell. How can we show people the incredible love of God if we're not prepared to get close to them? How can we help people to understand it if we don't give them practical ways to respond? And the crowds have this great question, what do we need to do? John's response is practical. And I wonder, when you speak to people about Jesus, how practical do you make the response that you invite people to?